stories of the, the mystics and saints and the, the Saint John of the Cross, Dark Night of the Soul, and, and if you read the literature of the saints who have gone for this, you know, it's, it's pretty dark. It's, it's, it's more dark than it is beatific. It's, it's dark. But that's not meant to scare you away from the journey. It's just meant to kind of show you that you will have to go through the darkness to the light. But you're not alone. You definitely aren't alone. That's the whole message of the Course. Mm -hmm. Take my hand. I'll walk with you. I'll go down into the chambers of the mind. I am with you always. You know, the, the reassurance is there that, that the journey to God cannot fail. You know, God would not give us a plan. God would not give us the means to awaken without an assurance, without a guarantee that, that the plan will succeed. That salvation is guaranteed. And it's of the mind. We don't have to try to save souls. We don't try to save any people. We don't have to save the animals, we don't have to save the planet, we don't have to save Mother Earth. It's kind of good when you really look at it. It's, it gets easier and easier when you start to realize you don't have to save anything. It's salvation is for the mind, the sleeping mind. And it's only achieved through peace. We, that eliminates a lot of things too. We don't have to get into anything else. You'll find here we're not into like, okay, eat a holy diet and do the holy exercise routine, <laughs> and look at the holy rocks on the holy <laughs> south side of, of the canyon, you know, and bow down and pray, you know, on the holy grass. <laughs> we, we just, we just don't, we're not into spiritualizing matter. Um, it was great, Elizabeth was talking to me today, what was the name of the, the people down around Levin, 1160? The Cathars. The Cathars. She told me about the Cathars and living in the Pyrenees and and what was the name of the, the castle? Montségur. Montségur. Well, it was so funny. I went to my Google and it's like, oh, and I was reading about the Cathars and and they're pretty much known as a Gnostic group and non-duality. There was, there was different of the Cathars. They did say that there was part of the Cathars that, that believed that there was this 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 force or this thing that made the earth. It wasn't God. It was great. <laughs> you imagine in 1160, God did not create the world. Of course, the Catholic Church burned 200 <laughs> with these people. No, million. Uh, almost, I don't know. They burned 200 um, at the last stand. But uh, within the course of uh, two centuries, all of them had to disappear or convert. Yeah. So they burned quite a few actually. You convert to Catholicism or you're, yeah. you're killed, yeah. you're burned, you're killed. Or disappeared. Yeah. So and, and, disappeared. And, and there was, the, and the core teachings, you know, was the world's not real. And then I read on about their views on the crucifixion. They, did, they did not see the crucifixion. <coughs> they, they went further than denying the crucifixion. <laughs> they said, it is impossible for the Son of God to incarnate on earth. Ooh, ooh, in 1160, you're taking the virgin birth out with that baby, you're taking, oh, you're taking the whole theology out with one undercut. Not that they went after the crucifixion, but they went after that is an impossible. It is impossible for the Son of God to incarnate on earth. That's the teachings of the Course in Miracles. Uh -huh. That's the teachings of Christian Science. That's the teachings of non-duality. And talk about unpopular. <laughs> We're talking it's so unpopular that they burn them all, and then they get the final two hundred, and they give them a choice. It's not like just. Like uh, Joan of Arc, you know, we'll put you up there and we'll burn you. It's, we'll give you a choice. You convert to Catholicism and you're free to go. Or you keep talking about <laughs> that stuff that you're talking about. You can just walk right into that fire over there and two of, 200 of them walked right into the fire. <laughs> now that's faith. <laughs> they were singing. 
<laughs> uh, singing. Enjoy. As they're enjoy. enjoy so going into it. Yeah. Um, that their <laughs> teachings, philosophy, and demonstration inspired Saint Francis. Saint Francis built his order a century later over in Italy. Saint Francis. Because some of you might have seen the story where his, his mother was actually French and, and his father was a, was a merchant and was into f dealing with fabrics in the Pyrenees and this area was where uh, he got a lot of his fabrics. So St. Francis found out about this non-dualistic group living this way. So, and here you, and you walk into our monastery, you see St. Francis there. So you can see these symbols just reverberate throughout history. He said that um, it didn't matter to them that it, it failed at the time, uh, because they said it was uh, like a seed that one day would, like the rose, the, the song of the rose, the seed one day would um, blossom. So the, so the symbol there for reincarnation is, is of, we're talking about exposing and purifying and clearing. They could see that that was a process over time, not limited to one lifetime. And yet I come back to Wikipedia, they believe that the Son of God could not incarnate. So the reincarnation was more of, of the Holy Spirit's use of time to unwind, literally to unwind, however long it takes to unwind from time, from the belief in time. Beautiful, you know, when you think of it, so high, so beautiful and high. That's. That's all that we really are looking for now, are symbols of transcendence. Sharing the peace, shining the truth, singing and soaring in you.